Hey what's up guys, it's Kerry from Phoenix and & Bow and welcome to today's shave. Okay so this is a, this is a pretty special um, shave in as much as I would like to um, use it as a, a shave which remembers um, family members and uh, friends um, and you know those who have passed before us in terms of military veterans and also those who are still with us. Um, so really the, the bulk of the video uh, is going to be me just kind of reflecting um, on a few of those people uh, who are special to me um, and just sharing a few stories really about um, about those people and those times um, that, I, that I experienced. Um, but before we get into that, let me take you through what I'm going to be using to, um, to shave with today. Uh, I thought I would go back to my old uh, ceramic bowl, my old Phoenix and Bow ceramic bowl, and in there I have a small amount of um, Albion pressed into that. Um, I did want to, I did want to have a, a you know, like a full Spitfire shave, given that it is Remembrance Weekend this this weekend that we're on. Today is um, Saturday, the seventh uh, of November, so I wanted a kind of a full spectrum Spitfire shave, but. My admin is shoddy, and I couldn't find any um, any Spitfire soap here at home. Uh, I do, however, have the rest of the Spitfire products. So the soap itself is going to be Albion, um, and then I'm going to be uh, using Spitfire Splash, followed by the lotion, which is alcohol-free, uh, and then just because I'm mental uh, and want to go um, all in. I'm going to have some uh, solid cologne just to treat Mrs. Burroughs to the lovely Spitfire scent. Um, oh, and as a bit of a pre-shave, uh, because my beard is three or four days old now and quite spiky and wiry, I'm going to use some of our uh, Wilderness Utility Oil. So how are you doing? I hope you're very well. I hope you're looking after yourselves, that you're in uh, good form mentally, physically. Emotionally, uh, I hope your families are well, and that you're taking care of one another and your respective communities. You know, during this remarkable year that is 2020. Um, I think I might. I'm kind of tempted just to go for a one-pass shave because of how tight I am on time today. So I think I'll, I think I'll do that. a one pass shave, maybe with just some pickups afterwards. I cut myself quite badly here on my last shave, so I need to be careful of that. Oh, brush, I'm using uh, my favorite uh, one-off Cadman and Bow um, synthetic tuxedo nut uh, brush here. A kind of uh, gorgeous metallic gold uh, swirling into the, sorry, pearlescent gold, swirling into the kind of onyx black. Lovely. So lots of, lots of lava there. Some kind of bubbly proto lava, not bothered by that, it's all good. Um, and with this, so my, my knot is uh, thoroughly loaded there. And what I like to do is just pull some of that lava out of the bowl and kind of just rub it into my face just to build on kind of the pre-shape. So that's going on top of the utility oil. So given that it is uh, Remembrance Weekend, you know, I thought it fitting to, to remember um, relatives and, and, and former colleagues um, who have served in the military. You may or may not know that I did um, a short four year stint in the British Army in the Royal Corps of Signals, specifically 14th Signal Regiment, where I was a communications operator. And I worked operationally in uh, Kosovo and also uh, East Africa. So not too long, you know, four years. I mean, it's still a chunk of time, right? But certainly not nothing compared to um, what my two grandfathers did, um, and other friends of mine who I stay in touch with uh, did in the military. 
My grandfather on my dad's side, he um, he served in the Royal Navy, and uh, and on my mother's side, my papa, he served in the in the army and um, pup. I don't really know a lot about uh, Grandad's military service outside of Royal Navy, but Pup served in um, during World War II uh, and operated in North Africa and, and certainly Italy. Uh, didn't really say too much. I know there was uh, plain clothes operations, according to my mum, so I can only guess what he got up to. But um, but apparently he saw Mussolini's body. Um, uh, you know, once he'd been once he'd been lynched. Uh, by the Italians and um, yeah so he was wherever that was I'd, I'd have to research it uh, just to briefly pause I should say that I'm using because I've got a bit of a beard uh, the Blackland Dart which is very effective uh, quite an aggressive razor <coughs> um, and effective at chopping through steel like whiskers which is what I have but um, coming back to coming back to people that I know. So when I served in Signals, I was in 237 Signal Squadron, and um, I must remember a guy called uh, Barry Keane, or Baz Keane, who was a top bloke uh, from the northeast of England, and he, in 2007, um, very sadly got killed in Afghanistan uh, whilst out on operations, um, and he was reorganizing his team, and he got um, fatally injured by a lone mortar round. Um, Baz was just such a kind bloke, you know, he was a corporal when I was in the signals, I was a private, a signaller, um, and he really looked after me, he was very friendly, good with his troops, a really good operator, just very warm, individual and caring, uh, but really good at his job as well. So that's, um, I must re remember Barry, very sad uh, when I read about his death a long time ago now. Another person I'd like to talk about, which is really who this video is for, I don't know him, um, but he's, he's uh, a Glaswegian gentleman called uh, Stuart Carmichael. And Stu was, I was put onto Stu's um, condition and situation by a vlogging friend of mine called uh, Andy Wilmer and Andy has the, you may or may not know, the uh, Opinionated Brit podcast um, and Stu is a friend of Andy's and Stu is a 15 year veteran uh, who formerly served in the um, REMI, the Royal uh, Electrical Mechanical Engineers as a vehicle recovery specialist, I think, and, and then went on to serve in, um, I've jotted it down here, nine Paris Squadron Royal Engineers. So hard as nails, he uh, he would have done P Company to get his para wings, um, absolutely hard as nails, individual, um, multiple tours out to, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, really did his bit for his country. Um, he's 40, he's uh, married with three children, three girls, all youngsters, and um, he has motor neurone disease which is a, I nearly swore there, it is a bloody awful, horrendous condition. And um, looking at his Facebook page and his GoFundMe page, he is a really courageous individual because he's dealing with it uh, with real kind of grace and dignity. So Stu, so motor neurone disease is incurable. Uh, it is a god awful um, condition where you slowly deteriorate um, and lose the um, function and utility of, you know, your your body essentially. Um, and if you watch, I I, I really um, implore you to go and go onto his GoFundMe page, go onto his Facebook page, and I'll provide links in this video to watch his videos and. Um, you know, you can re you can really see the emotion in his face when he talks about uh, how life is for him now and his family. So he's looking to raise, he is raising money, he, um, Stu and his friends and family and community and the wider communities as, as his condition has kind of rippled outwards, um, looking to raise money uh, for him to go to 
Mexico, I think, and receive a pioneering stem cell treatment, which I don't think cures the condition, but it can, um, I think it can certainly assist. Um, and I think in some cases it's, it's reversed some of the um, symptoms, but it's, you know, you've got to, you've got to do it, right? You know, what, what's the, it's just, it's obvious for me to say, but what's the alternative? You know, if, if there is a potential treatment which can help you, then you're going to do that. But, um, but you can't, you can't receive that here in the UK. Um, and so the GoFundMe page, um, please go and visit it and whatever you can spare, please donate some cash to Stu's um, cause. He is a, you know, um, just from what I've seen, a really strong individual. Um, and this is certainly one hell of a fight that he's got on his hands. So he's gonna need every single bit of help and also, you know, his own kind of mental fortitude that would, that would have served him so well whilst he was, um, you know, a serving soldier. So like me, I'm sure you have people um, that you also remember during this time of the year. Um, <coughs> I work in London and um, whenever I go anywhere near the Cenotaph on Whitehall, uh, um, I get a little bit emotional. You know, I, I can just, uh, especially on, on, uh, on Remembrance Day, uh, just just being with other people during that time and just the atmosphere is charged, you know, just um, thinking of loved ones and all, all of those who've gone before us serving our countries. Um, it's quite an emotional experience and quite an emotional day. Right, okay. I think that that is good enough. I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> A few little nicks, I'm not gonna go crazy. Um, with multiple passes today, a little bit short on time, but I wanted to check in with you and, um, you know, just update you, just share those things that I've just spoken about, about, um, you know, those veterans that I recall, uh, you know, uh, and, and also work with and my family members and the little bit that I did for my country. Um, but to also highlight Stu Carmichael's condition uh, and his ongoing battle. So um, wherever you can, please, you know, if you can spare any of your hard-earned cash, I know times are difficult now, but please visit that page and um, donate what you can. But outside of that, things are um, epic. Things are really good. You know, um, at, at home and, and with uh, Phoenix and Bo, so thank you very much for your continued support. We, um, we really we've really struggled the last kind of couple of months with supply chain issues caused by the pandemic, which we're now finally resolved, which is great. So that means if you have uh, an Empress Rising pre-order, that will be shipped on uh, 16th of this month, Monday the 16th of November. Um, and those orders will also go out to stockists. We will have a small amount available uh, on our shop but not very many. So if you missed out on the pre-order um, and fancy treating yourself to an Empress Rising, then uh, be quick. Great shave. Sometimes it just needs to be a one part, so that's awesome. Um, something else to talk about are um, some candles, the ambience section uh, of our shop. So, wow, wow, burn. Um, we're going to be releasing uh, candles, soy wax based candles uh, of our scents. Uh, it just adds, you know, so these are things, I love candles, you know, um, I think they just, they add a nice ambience uh, to a room, to an environment, as well as the scent. So I think it just adds another layer of, um, of experience and enjoyment uh, to a shave in your den, but also, you know, you might just like the scent of Albion or Trafalgar or Iceni or Spitfire or whatever it might be and having that somewhere in your home flickering away in the background um, it's just a really nice thing it just it just adds another layer to the overall experience so I'm playing with candles at the moment 
Uh, I have a rather large one here, uh, which I don't think we'll be doing in this size. This is, I've got Spitfire in this. Um, so we're working on it. We won't be going with that size. I think what we'll, we'll be going with eventually are these little smaller, hopefully the camera is focused on that properly, these little small frosted glass offerings. Uh, we're not sure if we're going to go for the clear or the amber. Do you have a preference? Um, so that's all epic. Very excited about them. As well as, obviously, one day, I promise you, we will get uh, vegan and sovereign limes out in due course. Um, I'm not going to give a date because it just it always slides. Um, if we can realise it before the year's out, happy days. Um, but no promises, but we will keep you fully updated. Um, yeah, that's pretty much me. Yeah, all, all good here within Phoenix and Bow. Training well. Um, Recognising the need for more systematic rest being built into my, my training, my movement practice, my training practice. So mixing it between, you know, strength, so kettlebells, a um, bit of stretching, a little bit of yoga, threaded into that. And then also cardiovascular work, predominantly done on my mountain bike, and a little bit of trail running here and there. But I'll train, rest day, train, rest day, and do it that way. Um, you know, because you've got to find that sweet spot in terms of... Um, not overtraining, otherwise you'll break yourself and you won't reap the uh, rewards. Um, so yeah, feeling feeling pretty good, um, no complaints. Anyhow, I'm almost out of time, so thank you very much uh, for watching. Take care of yourselves, uh, and as always, shave right, feel brilliant.